Today, we're looking at the effects of infecting carrot root sections with various strains of Agrobacterium. Three weeks ago, we made some carrot root sections and infected them with two species of Agrobacterium, Agrobacterium tumefaciens and Agrobacterium rhizogenes, to see if Agrobacteria had any effect on the growth. To remind you, first we sterilized whole roots and then we cut them into sections working on the bench but next to a flame to keep the cultures sterile. Four sections were placed onto agar medium in a petri dish and then in each petri dish we infected the sections with one of three different strains of Agrobacterium. Two of Agrobacterium tumefaciens and one with Agrobacterium rhizogenes. The fourth plate was left uninfected as a control. The dishes were then sealed and kept in a dark room at 28 degrees for three weeks. Today we're looking at tasting cultures which we set up on the very first week here, most of them pretty well, and you're going to be using during this practical all the skills which you've learnt in the two intervening practicals. So remember all of the points that you were taught there of setting up the microscopes, of looking at detail, making quantitative measurements, of always making sketches to show exactly what you're seeing, and using scale bars and labelling things. For the carrots, we've got the four different treatments, those that had no bacteria added to them and those that had the three different types of bacteria. In the carrots, which were used as a control with no infection with the agrobacterium, there's been a minimal amount of cell division on the surface of the cells and the tissue looks slightly dry. In the carrots with the so-called disarmed strain of Agrobacterium tumefaciens, that was called LBA4404, there's also been minimal growth and division of the cells. So let's see what we saw in the T37, the wild-type Agrobacterium tumefaciens, and in the Agrobacterium rhizogenes strain. The Agrobacterium tumefaciens has caused considerable amounts of callus or tumor growth on the surface of the carrots, while the Agrobacterium rhizogenes strain has caused the surface of the carrots to differentiate into and produce roots. Let's have a look at the sections, and you can see where both the roots and the disorganized callus tissue is coming from. It's coming from the region between the cortex and the steel, where the cells have been activated by the hormones present in the bacterial plasmid to produce the differentiation of the cells. Plant development can be disrupted dramatically by certain pathogens. We saw how the bacterial pathogen Agrobacterium tumefaciens causes tumours on differentiated plant tissues by activating cell division. The process involves a transfer of bacterial genes into the plant chromosomes at wound sites that has result in genetic transformation of the plant cells which then divide in an uncontrolled fashion because they've incorporated the genes for hormone production into the cells, in our case the carrot roots. These genes are located in a circular molecule present in the wild-type Agrobacterium tumefaciens, known as T37. This is on the TI plasmid that containing the genes. It's some 206,000 base pairs long, and the part that's transferred into the nuclear DNA of the carrot is known as the tDNA. It contains the genes which make the hormones that induce the plant cells to divide. A different group of genes, both for the hormones and controlling of the plant development, are present in Agrobacterium rhizogenes, and these led to the production of differentiated roots from the carrot cells at the site of wounding, or in our case, a cutting of the root tissue. The third strain of Agrobacterium that we used was similar to the wild type T37, but it actually had the genes for hormone production removed. This meant that although the TI plasmid DNA was transferred into the carrot cells, they didn't actually cause any production of the extra hormones. In one of the biotechnology lectures that I gave to our BS1003 class, I discussed the tDNA structure in a little more detail, and the next clip shows parts of that lecture that were recorded live and summarised some of the material which I've already discussed in this blog video.